Well, good afternoon. Uh, as of right now, Pastor is trying to get Rose in to an immediate care center. She's been sick. And Doug said he was going to try and be here to take care of the service. Well, he also had a doctor's appointment. So everybody's running late. So I guess we will start the service and uh, see, see where we can, you know, how far we get. So if you want to stand and uh, greet each other. Uh, Pastor Haberstock is going to uh, take over for us and get, get our service underway. There are days when we come like to times like this. And we certainly want Pastor and Rose to be well cared for in these times. Let me ask, as you are able, to please stand with me. And respond to me. 
O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory Lord. be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, the Lamb of our salvation. Please be seated to sing. First readings are from Roman chapter 8, starting at verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself would be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pain of childbirth until now. And, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the fruits fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved, now hope that has seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope that for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Like Elias, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself intercedes for us with groaning too deep with words, and he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that we might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and to those whom he called, he also justified. 
and to those whom he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading is from Colossians chapter 4, beginning with verse 2. Continue steadfast in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time also for us, that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ, on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is and how I ought to speak. Conduct yourselves widely toward outsiders, making the best use of time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsatory. Please uh, read responsibly. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord, my God. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. We'll continue with our next hymn. Thank you, Larry and people of Emmanuel, for allowing me this privilege to speak from Pastor, from the Lord through Pastor. And so grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ abound with us today. We continue talking about prayer as we walk through this Lenten season together. We're using the Lord's Prayer as our outline. Past Sunday, we talked about the fourth petition. Give us this day our daily bread, and how this means more than just food in the pantry and on the table. What is meant by daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, food, drink, clothing, Shoes, house, home, land. There was a time when the animals were especially important in Des Plaines, like they were in Wittenberg. Money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers. Be sure to vote that the Lord may so direct us to good government. Good weather 
it concerns me who is paying the price for this weather. Peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. All of these, Luther and Pastor and I, and perhaps you, count as daily bread. Jesus taught the importance of prayer throughout his ministry. One that his followers to always look to God, the Heavenly Father, as their sole source of life, family, friends, and material goods. As a way to start the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught an important point, that God, almighty maker of heaven and earth, is fatherly, is father, originator, and lover. One way that we stay connected to God is through prayer. Paul urges the believers in Colossians to pray. What is part of the letter he wrote to them? Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which Paul was in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as is needed. Paul was encouraging fellow believers in Colossae to keep in constant communication with God, their Heavenly Father. One way that those believers and us here today stay in constant communication is through prayer. I have a thing in the morning that is first things first. Exercise for readiness. Sit in the lazy boy and recount the prayers for family, for ministers, for civic government among us. I hope you have a routine to each morning of first things. It's not always easy to do these things on our own. Prayer is one of the three key functions that we are focusing on this Lenten season. Rejoicing in the Lord, I mean, glory in Jesus every day. Praying in the Spirit, praying without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances for everything. And as I wrote to one of our music makers, serving the Lord by serving the Lord's people. We do not know what we want to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God, Paul wrote to the Romans. And in that same reading, Larry read, my professor teaching Romans, Sigrid Beggar, said, and I pray too that there will be bees in heaven. They are so sweet. Paul encourages us believers and encourages those believers in the philosophy that can you continue steadfastly in prayer, to keep praying often and regularly, not just when they're in a bad situation. This is unfortunately how some people today even think that they only need to talk to God when something bad is happening to them or to a loved one. Or in my situation at Brookdale, we are always at risk. So we are always saying to each other, keep me in your prayers. Instead, Paul wants all believers to develop a habit of praying. In addition to developing a habit of praying, Paul wants us to be thankful to God for all things. When God the Holy Spirit teaches you, me, and all believers how to pray, also teaches us how to be thankful in every situation. How do we pray? 
Oh Lord, Lord, give me those words and memories of those for whom I pray. In addition to developing the habit of praying, Paul wants us to be thankful. Be thankful in all things. And ask the Christians at Colossae, pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message. Which I think needs to be emphasized so often. Here and everywhere. You are loved by God. The God in whom I believe loves you. And so that's where the power for us to love each one other comes from. And I pray that we continue to proclaim that boldly. They in that time loved by God and needed to know that. God's law is clearly written on the hearts of all people. As Luther explained it, well, excuse me, my legs don't support me like I like to, so allow me to sit. you learn the commandments, we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. He also proclaimed, we should be not, not harm our neighbor. What is that mean, commandment? Do not commit false love. Uh, do not be false to your neighbor. We should fear in God, love God, so that we may keep people in mind and speak well, defend, and do the kindest things among people. The commandments really are, as we hear them, I believe, boundaries for not doing ill to others, but for doing good to others. Paul Peter talks about the same thing. In your hearts, Christ the Lord, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make an offense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. When you share the hope, the anticipation that we have, however beyond that, the assurance that we have, do it with love and with kindness. Pray and ask God to help you say such kindness in the moment. Paul is encouraging the believers in Pelosi and us today for opportunities to share the hope we have in Jesus with others. That might sound a little scary. It's a great opportunity we have as believers in Jesus Christ to get beyond being scared. Pray for us that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ and so when they come in to pick up things tomorrow and sit down at the table, sit with them and listen to them. What is it that brings you here? What is it that keeps you here? Share the Paul then goes on in his letter to the believers at Colossae to encourage them, encourage them in their faith to walk, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace.
great season with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone. Careful how salty you get with your answer. But the season when you have an opportunity to share the hope you have in Jesus, you need, I need, to make sure that we know who you're, we're talking to. Be mindful of the person who you're talking to. Does a person have any idea about God? Does a person have a little history of God's good news? Is a person currently struggling with the cares of this world? This is when it is to find out a little about the person as you prepare to share the hope you have in Christ. And how are you going to do that? Among our new residents, my first question is, where did you grow up? What was it like? And everything comes up. Finding out about the person is the best place to start because then you will be able to better know where to start sharing the assurance you have in Jesus with another person. This is what you do in the food, food pantry, Pastor. Make sure to say, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace. Seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Taking a couple of minutes to get to know a person a little better helps me share the hope I have in Jesus. Taking these couple of minutes also shows the other person that I truly have interest in, in them as a person. We live in a society today that seems to devalue sincere personal relationships. At least that's how TV portrays it with the 300 some channels I have out of Comcast. There are so many things that we can do online, which is great and very helpful for many of us. When online interactions replace in person interactions, that's when it can become a problem. Yesterday, I met with pastors of the English district because I still am a member of the English district and discovered that a pastor I have seen in eight, seven years, but who I bedeviled for 10 years as a member of the congregation, had colon cancer and was coming beyond the chemo and the next. I would never have known had we not been doing interline inter with online with the computer as part of that time. One thing that some Christians struggle with is not being confident in sharing the hope that you have with Jesus, with someone else. That's why you sharing your faith with someone isn't about you, but about Jesus. My best friends. I wonder, when you come in Sunday, Wednesday, are you aware that the organist already is sharing that Today, as I said before, it began with the last hymn, and then she played something with the hymn we just said, Lord Keep Us Steadfast, and then she played something about the first hymn. I wonder if any of even knew to listen or things like that from the organist. And it's not just quiet time, but it's a wonderful time to come together and meditate. Choir is choosing to 
did something. It's a false word. Singers, the Emmanuel singers, are coming to do together to do something. As we came down the aisle on Sunday, we were humming something and singing. of the truth of God's word whenever we need it. What word of God jumps out of you when a person says something that sounds as sweet. when God gives you an opportunity to hear what you say? That hurts. May I share something else with you? The Holy Spirit will remind you of a nugget. Have we been listening, reading the Bible as Pastor has suggested, memorizing from the Bible to have that nugget of truth to share? Oftentimes, that nugget of truth is just what that other person needed to hear. Since God knows what every one of us needs, even before we pray about it. God knows what we need even before we pray about it. But God is delighted to hear us pray about it, to hear from you. We nurture our spiritual life as we use Lutheran small catechism. Maybe you have, any of you have a little little paper booklet, Luther's small catechism. Can't buy them anymore. They aren't made. When, when I was maybe nine, I went to the Bible class, to vacation Bible school in a neighboring congregation. And I could remember things enough that the pastor came by Unfortunately, at that time, I knew it all. And I had Luther's small catechism with explanation. It wasn't until I got to the seminary that I discovered in Luther's small catechism. What's this mean? I believe. My own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to me to Him. But the Holy Spirit has elected, chosen, hearing the word. That's the election. By the gospel, enlighten me with His gift, sanctify me. It's like you. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith in this Christian church, daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise up the dead, raise up me and all the dead. We have died. It's time for resurrection. We will live in Christ. Frankly, I look forward to 
when the time comes to bringing it rest and reward and rest and reward and rest since God cares physical and spiritual well-being trust confidently that God is also interested in the physical and spiritual well-being every other person on this planet. Even those who have turned away from this planet. And except that the lies of the world about which the commandments say Youngsters to disobey. Oldsters to disobey. Cheaters to disobey. My self interest. And we keep that <coughs> in your prayers for the love of the Lord. Forgive the ones that I had in there. May they not have detracted from the message we prepared for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand just for the Kyrie and the Lord's Prayer. The Kyrie really is an acclamation of the merciful Lord. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we pray. Father God, we thank you that Father Christopher cares to be with Rosie and is attentive. And we thank you for the love that you show to us. Almighty Lord, our Heavenly Father, everlasting you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run really into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, and now and forever. Amen. 
O God, from whom come all good counsels, all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Abide, O oh dearest Jesus. <laughs>